Hello YouTube! Thought we'd do a quick video here. I've gotten a few emails, people asking me, well, my repeater has a data port, so how do I hook it up to a computer so I can run other software? And the repeaters that have this data port are the Redivis RT97S and the Midland MXR10 models have a data port that you can hook to your computer so you can run computer software on your repeater whether it's Zello, whether it's the time and date and weather software, whether it's this repeater software that you have on the screen now because you want to run a channel ID every 15 minutes. How do I hook this up? Can I just plug it in and go? Well, unfortunately, you can't just plug it in and go. So this video series this is going to be part one. I'm going to guide you as best I can to show you how to build the circuit to do this. It's not very difficult. Okay. I do not have the Midland uh, repeater or the Redivis RT97S model. The repeater I have is a RT97 without the S. So I don't have a data port. I did a video on how to do that without a data port, how to get to that repeater model or any repeater model hooked to a computer. I did a video on that already, so you can go check that video out on, on that if you need to. But for the ones that have a data port, we're going to do a video series. Like I said before, it's going to be part one, okay? We're going to start out simple and easy because I know, you know a lot of you may not be you know, uh, electronics, you know, don't, you may not know how to solder and whatnot. Not a big deal. There's a solution to that. And I'll, I'll explain all that. So, the first thing that you're going to need, you're going to need some parts, okay? And one of the parts you're going to need, unless you have an old computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, and it has a serial port on it, which most computers, um, most people don't have that anymore. So, if you're a computer... Like I said, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, does not have a serial port on it, you're going to need an adapter. And I have the adapter right here. Um, it was like nine bucks. I got it off of eBay. And it go it converts USB to uh, uh, um, DB9 or also called serial port. Now, a couple things I want to point out about this adapter. If you have Windows 11, Make sure your adapter is compatible with Windows 11. I'm going to post a link to one adapter that is compatible with Windows 11. I don't have, well, when I bought this adapter, I didn't have Windows 11. So this the adapter that I have here is not compatible with Windows 11. It works fine with Windows 10. But just make sure it says Windows 11 capable if you're, uh, are you going to use a Windows 11 computer? So you're going to need the adapter. You're going to have to install the drivers for that adapter. Another thing I want to point out right away, and I found this out the hard way, if you're running a USB hub, whether it's a power hub, whether it's, it's a non-power hub, and you are running a hub because you need more um, jacks to plug in your USB cables, okay? and you have this adapter and you have problems with it then I would suggest you hook this adapter up directly to the computer USB port and do not run it through a hub. There may be times you can run it through a hub and it may work just fine but just for make a note of that, mental note of that, that if you do this and you're having problems it's not working right plug this in directly to the computer. Okay? So the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need, um, on the Midland and on the Redivis, they have on their repeater is uh, the male DB9 connector. So you're going to need the female DB9 connector. And I can post a link to this one. This is the type you can solder on. You're going to need one of these. This is the female one. And, 
or I should say and or if you don't know how to solder they sell ones that have a terminal where you can it, it, there's screws um, there's screws in here and you put the wire in this way and you just screw it down if you don't know how to solder this is a, a female one okay so you might need a couple of these or if you can solder then you're gonna need a couple of these okay now you're probably wondering why well, why do I need two of those? Well, I'll I'll explain in a minute here why. The other thing you're going to need eventually. This is part one. We're not going to talk about it now, but you're going to need if if you're not going to use the computer microphone in jack and the speaker out jack on your computer for whatever reason they're bad or whatever. You're going to need a USB sound card okay but that's going to be another video on that because we got to hook it up the computer is going to need the sound coming from the repeater so we're going to need a USB sound card or you can use your computer jacks but like I said that's another part we're not going to talk about that now um, what I did here is and you don't have to do it this way I took two female DB9 connectors ran a long bolt put nuts on it so I can use this for a test jig. And the reason why I did it this way, and I just didn't use a circuit board like this and mount, mount the jacks on here, is because this way I can flip it over easily to get to the bottom pins to solder wires to do whatever I need to do. So this is going to go in between, if I had the repeater, this would go in between the repeater and the USB adapter. Cause we got to build a little circuit and then I'm going to build a circuit right in here. But like I say, you can, you can do it this way with two long bolts and some nuts, or you can buy the pre freighted little circuit boards and solder them on whichever way you want to do it. Um, the next thing, uh, I'm going to explain here. Let's use this repeater software. Let's say you want to hook this software up to your, computer because you want to play a station identification that's required by FCC every 15 minutes and you want to play that so we're going to use this software because this software can do that I already did a video on that so I'm not going to go into great detail on how to set that up I already did a video but we're going to use this that's why I want to hook up this software to 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 the repeater so the first thing you got to do is you got to go to the COM port and you got to know what COM port when you set this up this USB ad adapter it will tell you what COM port number it is so make note of it when you're doing it and you plug it in so my case is COM port 1 I got to select it COM port 1 okay you can see down here right here it says COM port 1 make sure it says your COM port down there the next thing we got to do is we got to tell the software we're not going to use audio for detection. So we got to go under detection. We got to check it for COM port. This software is also capable of working on old computers that had the printer port. And that was the LPT port, which I believe is a 25 pin. But we don't need that. We want to use the 9 pin USB adapter. So we got to select this one right here okay and then to make sure you're in the right mode you'll see it right here detect radio com port okay so now what we're going to do we're going to go into the settings here we're going to go to the ptt configuration what this means is what pins on this com port DB9 connector I want to use to key up my repeater. The PTT means to key it up, to transmit, have the repeater transmit. Now you can select DTR, which is the name of the pin. The actual pin number is going to be pin 4 on this DB9. Or you can use the RTS which is going to be pin 7 of this connector or if you want to use both 
Because let's say you got one going to one something and one something somewhere else. You can have it do both of them. I'm just going to do the DTR, which is pin 4 on this adapter. Pin 4. So what I mean by pin 4 is when you take your, when you have your, let me get it here. When you have your solder type or non-solder type, we got to find pin 4 and solder a wire from this. Okay, that's what I mean by pin four on this connector. I'll post a link. There's a diagram that tells you what pins are what. I'll post a link to that in the description. Okay, so I'm going to make it be DTR, and like I said, DTR, uh, it's pin four. Now, I'm going to point something out that's very important, and I know people are going to ask about it, and people are going to do it, and they're going to have problems. Do not, right here, see it right here where it says DTR, active if low. Do not check nothing here. Do, do not do that. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen if you do. I know people don't want to build a circuit, so it's easy just to check that so you don't have to build a circuit per se. Well, the consequence of doing that is this. And I'm going to show you. Let's say... I check this okay even the the author puts a warning that pops up and people don't know what that warning means what does that mean what that means is that okay you can check that but if this software ever exits or crashes it's gonna key up your repeater and stay keyed up until you start the software let me show you I checked that, right? Do you see my little meter here? We're on 5.17 volts. It's a high right now, which means it's not activating the repeater right now. Remember, it's got to be a low to turn that repeater on to transmit. It's a high right now. This is what happens when you do that and the software crashes. Uh-oh. We're a low now. That repeater's keyed up. It will stay keyed up until that software restarts again. So do not check that because obviously if, the, if something happens and the software crashes and you're not there to restart it, it's going to keep your keyed up indefinitely until you start the software. Watch what happens when I start that software. It's going to go back to 5 volts, unkeying the repeater. See that? So don't do that. That's not, that's not good. So I'm going to go back and uncheck that. And you're saying, great, so now, now, so now it needs most, well, I shouldn't say most, the repeaters that we're talking about, the, the middle end and the red of us, need a low on the PTT pin to make the repeater transmit. So you're probably thinking, well, okay, we can't check that box, so how are we going to get a low to make the repeater work? Well, that's where we got to build a little circuit. And we're going to use a little simple cheap device called a transistor. A transistor we're going to use as a switch. This is what a transistor looks like. We're going to use it as a switch. And what I mean by that is when there's 5 volts, let me get my part marker. When you see 5 volts up here, that's going to turn on this transistor, which in turn is going to be hooked to ground. So it's like, a, it's like an automatic switch, switching it to ground to turn on the transmit of your repeater. Okay? And that avoids the problem if the software exits... Nothing's going to happen. You need 5 volts to make that work, to make that transistor turn on. So let's erase this. If I Right now you see it's, 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 a, it's a low right now because the meter is right there. It's, it's a low. If I exit this offer, it, st it still says a low. It's not going to turn on the, on the repeater. That's why we need to use a transistor. And that's why we don't want to check that box. So now, if I did this right, I'm going to key up 
the repeater. And to do that, using the software, and like I said, watch right here, I should get five volts coming out when I do this. If I have, if I have everything set up correctly, with, if I'm on the right pin with my meter, you'll see the reading on, on that display up on the right hand corner. So let's go ahead and the best way to do that is to go to configurations, go to beacon and play it and have a play a, um, a wave file. I made a pre-recorded wave file and I'm going to hit test and you get, I don't know if you'll hear it in this video, but I'm going to play it. But watch right here. You'll see the, you see five volts come up. Okay, there you go. That pin's working. That's working good. We got we got it set up correctly for the PTT now. So we're gonna to avoid having a problem if this software crashes, we're gonna leave it be a high, it needs a high, and we'll have it turn on that transistor. That's gonna be another video. We're not gonna do it now. We're just doing the basics here so you kinda understand how these videos are gonna go. That'll be another video. There's also one here for squelch. And again, squelch is different. You can use you can either use CTS uh, line for low or the DSR line. You can pick either one. If you don't, you can pick either one. And the CTS is going to be pin uh Eight, I believe, on this connector, on the DB9 connector, it's going to be pin eight, and the DSR is going to be pin six, and that's going to be low. That's going to be the squelch, or in the case of the Redivis RT97S, they also call it the busy line. And I, I don't know if Midland calls it the same way. It's either going to be called squelch or or busy line. I'm not sure. Um, how Midland calls it, but that's what th that's what that is. So that's what we got to do for the squelch. Now, remember, like I said before, this DB9 on the computer end only does the transmit pin and the squelch pin. The repeater has a mic in pin and a speaker out pin and that's where we're going to have to make cables from the computer going to the sound card and feeding those pins on that connector that's going to be another video but that's why we have to do it that way because the computer pins do not on the computer part does not have pins for that okay so that like i said that'd be another video that we'll do on on the sound card we can do a little at a time here so I, i'm hoping um, this will kind of give you an idea what what we got to do. Uh, I think I've explained everything. Um, this is part one. Uh, part two, we're going to start doing the transistor. We're going to start soldering on the transistor. We're going to do that step, baby steps, baby steps. So we're going to do a part two video here. Um, and uh, yeah, and then like I say, probably part three maybe will be the sound card. I'm not sure yet. Don't quote me on that. But at any rate, that's the plan. So I hope this video will, will help you get in the right track. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.